My name is Dean Van Faro, and I've been a pastor here at Calvary Reformed Church in Cleveland, on Cleveland's west side, for about 22 years. So there is a retirement village that is about three or four miles from our church building called the Franciscan Village. And for years, uh, seniors who live there were experiencing fumes and smells when they went outside into the atrium outside of their building. They didn't know that this was coming from a natural gas well. Pretty cool idea of, of oh, what, yeah. what it used to be and envision this being all open space back in the time. That is where the well actually was. Um, and the statue of St. Francis was right there. And so when the Franciscan village decided to build a new unit, they ran into this well. It began to become a real safety issue. As we were digging for footers and foundations, they struck the head of the abandoned orphan well. We kind of quickly realized it was still pretty active. You could hear it, you could feel it. Uh, it was still kind of rushing out. And they began to realize like, wow, this is gonna be something that could affect our neighbors, the school next to them, the church next to them, etc. It became very real to us that this was a public health issue for many different people in that corridor. This is one of thousands, tens of thousands that dot this country. There's so much to be done, like where do you start? Air pollution is very real to us. When the methane gets released from you know, natural gas wells, it comes along with benzene, it comes along with formaldehyde, it comes along with other chemicals that are really dangerous. Currently, Cleveland is the number two asthma capital in the entire country. You know, I have nine children, two of them, and one in particular has respiratory issues. So it is a little alarming when you realize that some of these things, while expensive and are time consuming, are like right in your backyard and kind of almost easy to remedy if you just try. Mm -hmm. Methane is the major greenhouse gas. When it is emitted, it is helping to keep that heat trapped here down at this level. The high number of high heat index days that Ohio is experiencing, that's a natural disaster. The scriptures make it clear that the very first command is to care for creation. I want my church to understand that this is an epic gospel that we have. God's renewing the entire thing. And that includes creation, big time. And when you talk about things that people love, whether it's their dog, whether it's their garden, whether it's the, you know, the sunset over Lake Erie, they get it. Okay, this is valuable too. God made this. Our first goal with, with creation care and with climate change is to get people back to the joy of creation. Then as we introduce the bigger issues like climate change, they realize, okay, this is something that I care about. This is something I need to care about because it's something that I love. We really want to get people out into the environment and experience it. We have to monitor these wells. To me, it needs to be a regulatory issue. We've got to get out there. We've got to look at these wells regularly to make sure that they're not emitting nothing. The older I get, the more I realize how tenuous this planet is. To me, it really comes back to joy. Creation is a joyful thing to experience and to realize that to keep that joy, we have to take care of it. 